Okay, so finally, after all that work with combinations, let's look at some poker probabilities. Uh, and I'm going to go through and first calculate the probability of each hand of cards. Not in the standard order of having sort of nothing, one pair, two pair, but in the, the smarter mathematical order, cause, because we're going to have to use some of the previous uh, sort of quantities, uh, number of possible outcomes, to calculate later ones. So, let's dive right in. And we'll start off with just how many five-card hands of poker are there. That's actually a pretty easy uh, calculation. There are 52 cards in the deck of cards. I'm assuming a standard 52-card deck. And I just need to choose five of them. The order you get your cards doesn't matter in a five-card hand. You can reorder them however you need. Um, so 52 choose five. And I'm not going to write out all of the... Uh, factorial work here. It's, it just take too long. There's so many things that can happen. So I just put in the calculator. I've already calculated this and there are actually 2,598,960 possible hands of poker. So how many single pairs are there? And I'm going to use the uh, the color scheme that I had from the, from the first video in these lessons where purple is going to choose the type of card and blue is going to choose the specific card and if I need to choose a suit I'll use green so to order to, to have a single pair what I need to have is I need to from my 13 um, types of cards in the deck I need to choose one of them to be paired up when I choose that card, there are four of that type of card, I need to make sure that I choose two of them to be in my hand, so I have a pair. And now I need to make sure that I get three other cards that do not pair up with anything else. So I've chosen the one card to pair up with, so there are 12 types of cards that will not match with this, and I need three of them, three different types here, so I'm going to, from those 12, choose three. And from each of those cards, there are four of each of those, I need to choose one specific card. Now you'll notice um, in here, the blue bottom numbers are going to always add up to five be, uh, for this because I'm ending up with five cards. I chose two from this and three total from this. When I multiply this all the way through, I will end up with 1,098,240. To find the probability, I'll just do this. Divided by the total number of possible outcomes, which is 2,598,960. I could reduce this. The uh, reduced fr exact fraction shows up on the very last um, slide here. But um, let me go to an approximate percent because for time's sake we got to keep moving. So in here, this will show up approximately 42.257% of the time. Okay, two pair. To get two pair, I'm first going to, from my 13 types of cards, choose two of them to be the pairs. For each of those, there are four of each of those types, I need to choose a pair of them to be in there, so four choose two, and four choose two. And then I need to make sure that the final card is not match up with either of these. So. I chose two of the 13 types of cards to be the pairs. There are 11 types of cards left. I need to choose one of them to be that lone card. And that lone type of card, there are four of those in the deck. Um, we have diamonds, hearts, clubs, spades. I need to choose one of them. Again, you can see the blue bottom numbers add up to five because I've chosen two here, 
two here and one here, so I have two pairs of cards. And when I multiply this through, I will end up getting 123,552. And to find the probability of getting the two pair, well, I'm just going to do this divided by the total possible outcomes, so 123,552 over 2,000,000. 598,960. And again, I'll jump straight to an approximate percentage. And so you will be dealt on uh, approximately 4.754% of the hands to pair. This is being dealt. It's not talking about drawing any extra cards. So that would change these probabilities and change the math to be much more complicated. That's two pair. Three of a kind. So for this, I need to first choose the type of card that I want to get three of. So from the 13 total types, I'll choose one. There are four of those cards in the deck, and I need to make sure I have three of them in my hand. And then I need to make sure the last two cards don't pair up. So there are 12 remaining types of cards. I need to choose two of them so they don't match up with this, and they don't match up with each other. And from each of those four cards in the deck, I'll choose one. Again, bottom numbers add up to five. We multiply through, and we'll get 54,912. To get the probability, we divide that by the total possible number of hands, so 54,000. 912 divided by 2,598,960, which gives us approximately 2.113% of the time you'll get three of a kind. So you can see it's really getting less and less and less likely. Okay, now we're going to change the order. So, so far we've been going relatively standard um, lowest hand to highest hand. Now we're going to jump straight to full house, so we're skipping a couple. Um, for a full house, the you get 13, choose 1 for the, uh, for the possible um, three card hands, because the false is made up of a group of three and a group of two. From that, there are four of those. I need to choose three of them. And then from the remaining 12 types of cards, I choose one to get the pair. And I choose two from there. Now for this, I just noticed that I did not um, put down full house in my notes, so I'm going to actually have to do a quick calculation, so bear with me. 13 choose 1 is 13, 4 choose 3 is 4, 12 choose 1 is 12, and 4 choose 2 is 6. So this shows up 3,744 ways. And to find the probability, I'm just going to do 3,744 over the total possible number, which was um, 2,598,960. So let me do that. Divide that by um, 2,598,960. And I'll get a probability of approximately 0.144%. Okay, now jumping to four of a kind, and these are usually the, 
picking the types of cards and grouping them up that way is pretty easy. When we start getting to straights and flushes, it'll be a little bit harder. So four of a kind. I start off 13 types of cards. I'm going to choose one of them to get four of the cards in there. And so of those four cards, I'm choosing all four of them. And then there are 12 types of cards that are not the same as this. I'll choose one of those. And from the four of those cards in the deck, I will choose one. When I multiply this all the way through, I'll end up getting 624. And to get the probability, I'm just going to do 624 divided by 2,598,960, which will be approximately 0.024. 0%. I'm going to keep uh, three significant figures on these, especially as you get to the smaller and smaller likelihood, instead of sort of three decimal places like an AP calculus would require. Royal Flush, the uh, sort of the top hand that you can get, very unlikely to get, and here's why. So for a Royal Flush, you basically first choose which a uh, suit you're going to be in. There are four, I said I was going to do this in green, there are four suits in a deck, and I want to choose one of those. There is only one um, royal flush in each suit. So for instance, a 10 jack, queen, king, ace of hearts is one possibility, and there's no other way to get a royal flush of hearts. So there are five cards in a royal flush, I need to select all five of them. If I have a seven in my hand, I can't possibly have a royal flush. It has to be those five cards. And when I multiply this through, I just end up getting four possible royal flushes. One for each suit. And the probability, and when you look at this, it is astronomically small. Astronomical sounds big, but it's extremely small. So four out of 2,598,960, which actually reduces down, or sorry, divides out to being approximately 0.000154%. So you will be dealt a royal flush that percent of the time. A straight flush. Now, um, for a straight flush, the first thing I'm going to make sure is I get a suit. So of the four possible suits, I'm choosing one to be in. The next thing I'm going to choose is the top card in the straight flush. And I'm going to assume that aces can be high cards or aces can be low cards. So um, there are, let me think this through, 10 possible high cards. I can have the ace, two, three, four, five on the low end, all the way up to, in this case, what would actually be a royal flush of a uh, 10, jack, queen, king, ace. So I have possible high card of ace, king, queen, jack, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, and 5, which is 10 possible high cards. I'm going to choose one of those cards to be high. And once I've chosen that I am in, let's say, diamonds, and that my high card is going to be a nine, the only possible straight flush is the five of diamonds, six of diamonds, seven of diamonds, eight of diamonds, and nine of diamonds. So there are five cards. I must have all five of them. When I multiply this through, I find out that there are um, 30, or sorry, 40, possible ways. But there are 40 possible ways to get a flush and a straight. We had uh, four of them that were royal flushes, which is sort of usually considered a sort of a higher level. So I'm going to subtract four for the royal flushes because the, if I have a royal flush, I don't consider it just a straight flush. And so that means there are 36 possible straight flushes that are not a royal flush. The probability is still extremely small. 36 over 
2,598,960, which is approximately 0.00139% of the dealt hands. Now, at this point, um, I actually have a couple of options. I could have done a straight now, or I could have done a flush, um, because I've taken care of what I needed to get rid of. Look at straight. So the idea is similar to the last one. There are 10 possible high cards in a straight, um, and I'm choosing one of them. And now, uh, since I don't need the flush anymore, each of those cards shows up four times in the deck. So I have four choose one ways to get the lowest card, four choose one way to get the second lowest, um, four choose one to get the third lowest, four choose one to get the fourth lowest, and four choose one ways to get the highest card. When I multiply this through, I will get... Um, let me make sure I'm doing this right, 10,240. However, if I have a straight flush or a royal flush, I'm not going to include those in just the straight. So I'll take those out, 10,240. I will take out the 36 straight flushes, and I'll take out the four royal flushes, and I'll just be left with 10,200 cards that are just a straight, nothing more. And so, the probability is going to be 10,200 divided by that same 2,598,960, which is an approximate probability of 0.392%. Two more things to consider. Flush. Uh, flush is actually pretty easy to calculate. I just choose a suit. So a suit, four, choose one. And then I just choose five of the cards in that suit. So 13, choose five. Multiply that through, and I will get 5,000. 148. And then, just like last time, actually last two times, I have extra stuff because if I have a flush that's also a straight, it'll be a straight flush. And the highest straight flush is the royal flush, so I need to get rid of the straight flushes and get rid of the royal flushes. And I'll end up with 5,108 flushes. And for the probability, I'll just do 5,108 divided by 2,598,960, which is going to be approximately 0.197%. And the final type of hand we can get is just nothing. You don't have any pairs, any straights, any flushes. And the way to get this is the following. I'm going to take the total number of cards, so 2,598,960. I'm going to take every other hand and add those up. So pair, two pair, three pair. Uh, we did full house, four of a kind, flush, straight flush, royal flush. Um, straight. Add all those up and you will get 1,296,420 ways to get um, any other hand than nothing. Subtract them and you will end up getting 1,302,540. I guess 302,000, not 302,000. And to get the probability, I just do that, 302,540, divided by that 2,598,960, and that will give me an approximate probability of 
50.118% chance of getting nothing, which then leads me to this. And again, I forgot to put one of these in here. I think it was full house. And if I remember correctly, I got a 0.114. percent probability, um, which uh, was for the full house. Okay, um, hope that helps answer some questions about these poker probabilities, and I'll continue getting some of these up.